Hi guys, Chris Wright here. Today we're going to talk about the HSL color wheel in DxO Photolab 4. This is a way that we can control bands of color throughout an image. Okay, so looking on the right hand side, you can see up here we're highlighting the color um, tools. We're going down, we're looking at white balance, temperature tint, all these are, are well known, vibrancy, saturation, until we get to the color wheel down here. So let's turn this on. And to take you through the functionality, what we have here is um, a series of um, color spots. And these represent uh, various bandings of color. So if we go from the right hand side and we click on here, what you've got here is a, a preset which shows you a band of color. Um, if we look here in the middle, this is the starting point of the band, uh, left and right hand side, so starting point between going into red and going into blue. And the, um, the control here controls the feathering, um, the, the, the gradualness, if you like, of, of going into red and on this side going into blue. Okay, so looking at these, we're just these are basically pre-selects that are determined by um, DxO, and we'll have a look at how we can change these um, later. But the the thing to recall at this point is that these do not reflect what they're seeing in the picture; they're reflecting what the software is predetermined to see. Okay, so if we go on the white. Um, what this shows you is the entire picture. Um, and this is important because if we look down below the color wheel, you're looking at saturation controls. Um, if we move into one of the color bands, you're looking at luminance and you're looking at uniformity. And just quickly to um, go over what these actually mean, saturation will add richness to the color. So if I go into orange here, because uh, we, we've got a nice orange uh, piece there, and I go into the saturation, and you can see the richness of this here has been greatly enhanced. We'll take that back. Um, luminance, we can make that band darker, or we can make it brighter. Uniformity, um, let's just choose green to demonstrate the uniformity. What uniformity does is it takes the colors within a band. So in this instance, we're on the green. Uh, we've got quite a lot of grass. That's why I was choosing the green. And you can see the stretching all the way from sort of greeny blue um, into almost yellow here. So uniformity, what this does is, is make the colors within that band a much smoother, um, more uniform um, selection. So if we go right across here, you can see this makes it a much sort of, um, sort of Robin Hood style green. And if we take it back there, um, it makes it a, a sort of darker, more arid style of green okay so this is um this is useful on areas such as skin for example if you're a portrait photographer um, where you might have um, different tones and colors going on in skin um, quite a useful tool to, to blend those all together okay so how does this um, work so the little white dots here um, show you the ones that we we have played with. So if we go back into the orange, you'll see that um, it's indicating the saturation has been changed there. And we'll change that back. Um, and we'll go here. Oh, whoops, inadvertently making that 30. OK. And that restores it to its former glory. Or we can go to the right hand side and just reset the entire tool. 
So for landscape photography, this is quite a useful tool because if we look at this picture, um, what we're seeing here is big expanse of green, various tones of green. It's going from this, this um, very sort of uh, bright sunny green at the front through to some desaturated greens sort of in the semi-shadow in this area in the middle. And going on to the moors, the greens morph into a sort of arid brown kind of a colour. So there's quite a lot to play with. The other thing that I'm particularly interested in in this picture is I want to give it more depth. Okay, we've got, we've got quite a big expanse in the foreground, which is really dominating the picture as, I, as I'm seeing it now. But there's potential to give it a great deal more depth. We've got these orange um, trees, really beautiful sort of autumn foliage coming out. And if we look around the picture, we can see this happening again. We've got the same thing going on and various points stretching back into the, the middle of the picture at least. So it might be quite effective to increase the, um, you know, play with these colours and see what we can bring out of the picture and make, make this picture visually more interesting. Okay, so I would start with the orange. So we've got the pre-selected orange wheel here. Now, there's two things that I can do here that, to alter the factory presets. The first is I can use the color dropper and I can actually go in and select that orange. And immediately that changes on the right-hand side and that tells me that I'm, I've got a broader kind of an orange. It's going into yellow. It's going into the darker reds here. And let's have a look and see how that affects things. So if we, if we take that right across to its extreme, you can, you can see very easily these trees here are lit up. Some of the grouse more here is lit up crests of some of the trees and it's quite extreme so um, I'm going to take that back this is really just to show what might happen and we can increase the luminosity again across the same range okay so if we take that back to 50% we can see that now in the whole picture the other way you can select a range of colour, um, if we take this back here, we can do this manually, um, i.e. we can click on the, click on the colour here, we can take a look at the colour range that's been selected for us, and we can drag that around. So if I wanted to make this broader, I can simply drag these out. Okay. And again, I can bring the luminance up, really make this start to stand out. And you'll see these changes reflected across all the way back through the photograph. So that's two different ways you've got of, of selecting your color range to play with in the HSL wheel. And guys, here's the finished picture. You can see that I've cropped the sky out but um, and carried out quite a few more adjustments but this is this is where the picture goes. Um, what I'm going to show you in the next video is um, ways of again addressing the color tones but using different tools. Um, so the, the we've looked at the HSL wheel we can see how we can use it to select ranges of color we can alter those ranges of color but these are ranges that will be applied throughout the entire image and the next video i'm going to show you ways that we can apply effectively to spots within the image okay this has been chris wright thanks very much for listening and we'll see you again thanks